Welcome to the Ohio Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Uh, before we get started with our presentations, just a few quick housekeeping items. The first is that attendees are welcome and encouraged to ask questions to any of our panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. You can pose your question to a specific presenter or you can ask a general question to any and all of the presenters. Also, just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And there is one more block of sessions this evening, as well as sessions tomorrow, so please do sign up for those if you haven't already done so. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, which will be Earlham College. Hello, thanks for getting me started here. And thank you everyone for joining today. And if you're joining later, whenever you have the time to tune in, I'm Jindaya Herbert. I'm an admissions counselor at Earlham College. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Earlham. I do recruit in Ohio. So please let me know if you have any questions and I'll put my contact information in the chat after my presentation. All right, so we're gonna get started. Um, so Earlham College, as you can see on the map, is in Richmond, Indiana. Um, we are about five minutes from the Ohio border, so pretty close. Uh, we are located Richmond, Indiana, 800 acres is our campus. You can see a little of it behind me in my virtual background. Um, I like to say it's an acre for every student. Um, so 200 acres is where you'll have your dining hall, um, all the academic buildings and residential halls. And then what we like to call the back part of campus is where you can go hiking. Um, we have an equestrian barn for our equestrian team as well as a student-run barn co-op. And then we have Miller Farm where our students grow food in the garden back there and our, all of our athletic fields. And so we do have a small town vibe here in Richmond, but we're in close proximity to three larger cities. Um, so Dayton, Ohio being the closest at 45 minutes away, and then Indianapolis and Cincinnati are, are respectively about an hour and a half away. And so we are a small private liberal arts college. Uh, so First and foremost, our faculty and staff are the ones that are going to be uh, your mentors, your advocates. They are the ones joining you in the classroom. They're the ones uh, cheering you on in the athletic stands. Um, it's a pretty distinct and small community. It's definitely more of a family-like atmosphere. Um, we're it's also a distinct community because we are Quaker College. Um, you don't have to be Quaker to attend or anything like that. We welcome all faiths and non-faiths, but it means that we have principles and practices. There are five of them. Um, it's simplicity, respect for persons, community, integrity, and peace and justice. They shape our community on campus. It's what we strive to be as a community. And then we have a history of bringing the world to Earlham and sending out our students and faculty uh, to a variety of global destinations, which I'll show you in a minute here. Um, and we're getting back to that in the summer, which is very exciting. And then in terms of rigorous academics, we don't value rigor at Earlham to try to separate the weak from the strong or anything like that. It's all to, we expect you to do more than you expect of yourself. And that's what rigor means to us. We offer over 40 different majors and minors on campus. I will say the popular programs tend to be any majors that lead to that pre-medical uh, pathway. So think biology, chemistry, biochemistry, and neuroscience. But our other big majors are going to be psychology, global management, which is our business management, or students that are interested in entrepreneurship or marketing, and then as well as computer science is a huge major on campus. But we also offer those niche majors. So think peace and global studies for students interested in the Peace Corps or exercise science um, or data science, which are other popular majors on campus as well. In terms of class size, I know I said 800 students, but lends to smaller class sizes. On average, it's about 13 students. The most I've heard in a class is 60 students. Um, we only have one lecture hall on campus. Um, and even then we try to break those down into smaller lecture sizes and all of your labs are capped at 20 students. We're on a first name basis between professors and our students. Um, that's because speakers don't really believe in titles. 
And then unique at Earlham, all of our students have the opportunity to do a funded internship or research experience during the summer. It's guaranteed for all of our students, not a requirement, but it gives you a chance to have more hands-on learning and experience in your field. And then these are just a few of the places that our students are able to study um, either during a research trip during the summer, so those epic experiences, or a traditional semester program. So we have over 18 different locations, and the unique thing is that your financial aid package actually travels with you when you study abroad, whether that's a semester or a year. And then we offer over 60 clubs and organizations on campus. We are an NCAA Division III school, so not offering scholarships, but about a third of our students are student athletes. And then we have club sports, recreational sports, so think Aikido, badminton, or esports. We are a residential campus, so about 95% of our students are living on campus. We have residence halls, and we also have themed and friendship houses, so think Japan House, Mindfulness House, if you're interested in meditation or wellness, or Environmental House, if you're interested in environmental issues. And then we also have apartments, if none of those sound interesting. And then for class of 2019, so our students within the first six months of graduation, 92% went on to either be employed or a graduate program or a volunteer service program. So think Peace Corps, AmeriCorps. And you can see there our top job industries, education, because we have an education program, four years to get your bachelor's and master's. Um, and it's all at Earlham, so you don't have to go to a different school. Um, but also top industries include nonprofits, healthcare, and of course the tech industry. And then we are currently taking applications, even though the regular decision deadline has passed, we've extended it, so we're still taking applications. All of our students receive a merit scholarship, it's based on your application alone, and then we're still crafting financial aid packages for admitted students. Um, so you can, if you filled out the FAFSA, you can still apply to Earl and then we'll still send you a financial aid award as well. And I just want to thank you so much for joining this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks. Thank you, Earlham College. Um, up next will be the University of Evansville. Oh, there we go, okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sarah Wagner, and I am the admission counselor here at the University of Evansville that covers the state of Ohio. A little bit about the University of Evansville. We are the third largest city um, in the state of Indiana. We are located in Southwest Indiana, right along the Ohio River. We have about 2,400 students on campus, with about 2,000 of the students being our undergraduate student population. Um, you can see our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one in a small average class size of only 18 students. And I don't know about you all, but um, that's smaller than any high school class I ever had. UE does offer over 75 different majors. And some of those unique majors are archaeology, creative writing, and ethics and social change. We do have direct entry opportunities for nursing, athletic training, physical therapy, and physician assistant science. All of our students do complete at least one internship semester or a study abroad opportunity, which I'll get to here in the next slide. And a fun fact about the University of Evansville is that we are one of the smallest Division I schools offering 17 different athletic teams. And I said that I would come back to study abroad. This is Harlexton College. Um, Harlexton College is located in Grantham, England, and it is completely owned and operated by the University of Evansville, which means that any class that you take at Harlexton does transfer back to UE without a problem. And our faculty members do travel with students over to Harlexton to teach um, a semester abroad at Harlexton. There's a couple different programs that you can complete at Harlexton, like a semester long program, an internship semester. If you're interested in taking a gap year, we offer a program for that as well. And while you're at Harlexton, you'll have three day weekends, sometimes four if you get lucky, um, but that gives you opportunities to travel while you're visiting Harlexton. Next, let's talk about living on campus. The University of Evansville does have a two year live on requirements so our freshmen and sophomores to live on campus. Some new and exciting updates. The building that is currently pictured will no longer be come middle of May. We're actually tearing down this residence hall to build a brand new residence hall that should be available to students in fall of 2022. So if you come in person and visit um, anytime after May, you will see some construction on campus, but it'll all be worth it for a brand new residence hall on campus. 
Next, I like talking about some student resources. And the one I like talking about the most is peer tutoring. When I ask students, what are you most nervous for about going to college? 95% of the students say they're just nervous about the difference in workload between high school and college. Here at UE, we do offer peer tutoring to all of our students. So you can actually be paired up with an upperclassman and meet for about an hour a week just to go over different time management skills, study skills. So really just an upperclassman um, who will kind of help you through the transition from high school to college. And for student life, we have just over 130 different student organizations, and they range anywhere from community service opportunities to leadership development to Greek life and intramurals. My favorite intramural game would have to be inner tube of basketball. And yes, you do play basketball in an inner tube in the pool. It's a student favorite. Next, let's talk about applying to UE. There are two different pathways to apply to the University of Evansville. We have our traditional pathway or a test optional pathway. UE has been test optional for about five years now. Um, so that's something that we are going to continue doing. So if you would like to apply test optional, you can apply with an essay in lieu of your test scores. We'll need your UE application or we are on the Common App. Our application is free and will open up August 1 for current juniors. And we are still accepting applications if you are a current senior. We'll also need your high school transcripts, your SAT or your ACT scores, um, or that essay if you are interested in applying our test option pathway. I do have a note here on this slide that there are some programs who typically don't review test optional applications. However, this year they are. So if you have any specific questions about our direct entry programs and the best way to apply, please reach out to me. Next, let's talk about tuition and financial aid. Every admitted student here at UE does receive a merit-based scholarship. This year, they're ranging anywhere from five to $23,000. So it's a pretty wide range of scholarships and we do stack our scholarship. One stackable scholarship this year is our FAFSA scholarship. So any family that filed the FAFSA and sent it to the University of Evansville received an additional $1,000 at the university. I also encourage all my students to check out outside and local scholarships and any scholarships that are available in your community. And our average financial aid package last year was just under $30,000. And this year, on, we are on track and for our average to be just average $1,000. Next, this is one of my favorite things and one of my biggest piece of advice to students is to visit the campuses that you're interested in attending. Here at UE, we are able to offer in-person individual on-campus visits, still following all the CDC guidelines, and we are actually able to offer some very small group visits um, coming up in May. Once we get our current students off campus, we're able to bring some more visit days to campus. If you don't want to visit in person, that's totally okay. We are still offering virtual group and virtual individual visits where you can meet with a current student and a faculty member just so that we can start getting connected to campus. We also have a virtual tour online if you want to get a sneak peek of campus before you visit. And I have to do a social media plug. We do have a TikTok. So if you're on TikTok, give UE admission a follow. But definitely follow us on social media to see some more student-led content, just to see what it's like day to day. Over on um, Instagram, we actually have one of our admission ambassadors taking over Instagram and answering some questions. And here is my contact information. Don't hesitate to reach out if you were to ever need anything. And that's my actual cell phone number. So don't hesitate to text or call. Thank you very much, University of Evansville. Um, up next will be Purdue University. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today. My name is Taylor Patterson, and I am the Assistant Director of Admissions at Purdue University. Purdue is located in West Lafayette, Indiana. Campus is about an hour from Indianapolis and about two hours from Chicago. It's a two for one deal as campus is located on one side of the Wabash River and downtown Lafayette is on the other. You can see a picture of the sunset as students walk across that pedestrian bridge. Purdue falls into that category of a college town. The population of the area is about 120,000 people and the university brings attractions at a lower cost. There are regularly festivals, concerts, farmers markets, and you can see the lo local ice skating rink as well. Here are the numbers. You can see our total enrollment as well as our undergraduate student enrollment. Again, we're falling into the category of a large public land grant institution. While those numbers of undergraduate students is quite large, please know that our student faculty ratio is 13 to one and our average class size is 31. 
crazy, right? You can see our student breakdown too, because we are the land grant institution. You can see a majority of our students are coming from the state of Indiana. We have all 50 states represented on campus and over 120 countries represented in our international population. Students at Purdue are studying an array of over 200 majors available. They are divided up into these 11 different academic schools and colleges. The College of Agriculture is more than just farming. The College of Education is more than just being a teacher. We have 17 engineering disciplines. If you are undecided, exploratory studies is gonna be the place for you. The College of Health and Human Sciences is more than just becoming a doctor or a nurse. College of Liberal Arts has a ton of majors under the sun and also an opportunity for you to graduate in just three years. Our Craner School of Management is our business school. There are seven majors housed in that academic college. The College of Pharmacy, pretty self-explanatory as we do have a PharmD program on campus. Our Polytechnic Institute houses all of our technology majors as 14 engineering technology programs, also our professional flight. College of Science, again, kind of one of those self-explanatory academic colleges, but our computer science is actually housed in this college as well as data science. College of Veterinary Medicine, we do have that vet school on campus. We do have a large and small animal hospital and soon an equine therapy center as well. Speeding through this information so I can talk about what our current students are doing. One, to start, Alexis is a biology student and she is conducting research on a certain type of fish called the sculpin. She took advantage of studying abroad at a program in the Caribbean as the ocean became her classroom. Charlotte is a first generation student from Georgia. She really wanted to get an internship involved in radio and she applied for an internship her freshman year and works there throughout her college career. She is a great example of a student that came, took advantage of our degree in three program as she graduated from college in three years. SJ is an engineering technology student and he fell into a research project including Tupperware. That's what he's holding by talking to a professor after class. He will be continuing research and a graduate program. Lastly, we have Zach. You can see he is sitting on a roller coaster. He loves roller coasters, but also loves more than just roller coasters as he is a food demo um, contact in our co-rec. And he is also the president of the Roller Coaster Club. Speaking of clubs and student organizations, we have over a thousand. They are really a mix of everything under the sun, whether you're involved currently or interested in music. Our Purdue Grand Prix is called the greatest spectacle in college racing. You can see a picture of our Boilermaker special. That is our official mascot of the university. But again, there are so many things to do and get involved in. Our students are also part of the Honors College. They study abroad, are involved in research, and also our certificate programs. I get asked a lot of what am I going to do after graduation? Our CCO, the Center for Career Opportunities, is the one-stop shop for every career prep necessity. Whether you need help with a resume, a cover letter, anything like that, the CCO will help you. My number one piece of advice for during this journey for students currently in high school is keep an open mind. Just because you go to school in West Lafayette, Indiana, does not mean that you're stuck in West Lafayette, Indiana forever. The name recognition that Purdue holds, we have alumni across the country and across the world. I currently live in Southern California and my dentist is a Purdue alum as well as my next door neighbor. So you may be wondering what it is like to apply to the university. We utilize a holistic application review and that means we're taking every part of the application into consideration. Our only systems check is our minimum high school coursework. Students need to complete four years of math and English, three years of science and social studies, and two years of foreign language. You can see that GPA is not listed. We do not have minimum GPA requirements or minimum test score. This year we did adopt a test flexible policy and we hope that it will continue. It is not just, it has not been announced yet. We are also looking at what students are doing outside of the classroom. Those activities, we do have three essays as part of the application as well. One being the main common essay and two supplemental. We do read them. We don't make you write them just for fun. Also recommendation letters are encouraged, just giving us some more context. My one plug for this is apply early. We do have two deadlines. The early action deadline is November 1st and the regular decision deadline is January 15th. Last but not least, how much does it cost? My one plug for this is that our tuition has been frozen for the 10th consecutive year. 
ways to connect with us on this last slide, I will be putting this information into the chat. I'm going to pass the microphone off. Thank you. Thank you very much, Purdue. Um, as we move into the second half of our presentation, just a reminder for anybody who recently joined us, please do feel free to utilize that Q&A button to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time. But up next is Butler University. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us today. We're excited to connect with you and I'm very eager to share all about Butler University. My name is Katie Pop, and I'm an admission counselor with Butler along with being a graduate of the university. So you may hear me over the next five minutes sprinkle in a little bit of my own personal experience. So to start off today, I do have a special friend on our screen joining us. This is Butler Blue the fourth. He is our live mascot here at Butler University located in the heart of the city of Indianapolis. And he's gonna be guiding us along our tour today to show you all about campus since you can't be with us there in person. So to kick things off, everyone wants to know who makes up your student population and what does Butler look like? So Butler is just shy of about 5,000 students with our undergraduate enrollment. We focus really heavily on that undergraduate focus, ensuring that you're gonna have opportunities for internships and research that you may not have at other schools until you hit a graduate phase. Our average class size is capped at 22 students with an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. This is a really sweet spot when it comes to Butler University. We're a small private institution, right? We're not a huge public school or a super tiny community school. Instead, we fall right in that sweet spot. I always say that when you walk into campus Starbucks, you'll see a familiar face, but also a couple new ones at the same time. I think it really gives you the best of both worlds. And that has led us to being the number one regional university in the Midwest. Now I'm gonna go briefly, very quickly over all six of our colleges because I think it's important to know what we can offer to you on what basis. However, I do wanna mention that all Butler students will be braced with a liberal arts foundation. This can be a new term for you, but it's to ensure that all Butler students leave our campus as strong writers, thinkers, creators, team builders, and researchers. And through that Liberal Arts Foundation, you'll have the opportunity to take courses across all different fields. However, we are one university with six different colleges. We have the College of Communication, College of Education, College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, the Jordan College of Arts, and the Lacey School of Business. A couple of majors I'm going to give a quick shout out to today include our six year direct admit pharmacy program. This is for a doctor of pharmacy. We have an excellent Lacey School of Business here on campus. It recently has a brand new home as of a couple of years ago. But my favorite course within this college is our Shark Tank like um, course where students will have the opportunity to build and create a product from the ground up. The College of Liberal Arts and Sciences is the home to the many ologies of college biology, psychology, sociology, and more. They also have a brand new homecoming soon. And I'll give my own alma mater, the College of Communication, a quick shout out. These students are gonna hit the ground running on internships. Um, and if you don't know already, March Madness is of course in full swing here in the city of Indianapolis. And our CECOM students are right alongside them in sports journalists covering all of the action happening with March Madness. Now, as I did mention, Butler Blue the Fourth is gonna take us on that live tour of campus. So his first stop is here at Robertson Hall. This is our home of the admission office and financial aid, our welcome center here on campus. He looks very sweet with his letterman jacket here, and he wants to encourage you to come visit us on campus. We have many of opportunities virtually and in person to welcome you to Butler's campus, and we'll see you throughout the summer and fall semester as well. However, I do want to ensure that when you come to Butler, it's an academic first university, as you see with this Letterman jacket there, and we're eager to help you find that home. So next, Blue is taking us to the Selleck Bowl. This is where our football team and men's and women's soccer team play. And right behind that is the very historic Hinkle Fieldhouse. If you're a fan of basketball in any way, you're familiar with what this place hosts. Um, and as I said earlier, we're, we're eager to have March Madness right there in our backyard. We have over 20 Division I athletic teams, lots traditions. My favorite is at homecoming when we have the Butler Bulldog Beauty Contest. Right here in the backyard, we bring in Bulldogs from all over to show their Butler spirit. Next, you'll see the Blue has made his way to the observatory. Butler has many of opportunities for cultural education with exploring the sciences and the arts. We also are the home to one of the largest theaters in Indianapolis, Blue's Memorial Hall. So if you have an interest from anything from learning from science, after experiencing live music and culture, Butler could be a great place for you to come visit. We also see many from our community come and enjoy all the opportunities available to students. One of my other favorite components on campus is the eight before you graduate. This ensures you're um, equipped with eight opportunities to explore different culture and art. 
And last but not least, I do want to just kind of pause and talk about the admission process overall. Um, I can't encourage you more to connect with myself or my colleagues, Erin or Kyle, who are also within our admission office, work directly with you and your hometowns and your schools. Um, but we want to encourage you to come see us. And so when it comes to applying at Butler, our application does go live August 1st, and we have a November 1st early action deadline. Um, you can apply within a test optional scenario and still receive full admission and scholarship consideration. Alongside of that as well, we are still accepting rolling admission status for Butler students. So if you're of interest in that, we highly encourage you to check that out. Um, I always like to end with this aerial view of campus. Um, we're in a really unique spot, just 10 minutes from our downtown skyline in a residential area with a lot of green space and nature around as well. And so you get the best of all worlds when you come to a place like Butler. Um, I'm gonna pause one more time and give a quick shout out to Butler Blue the Fourth as he followed us on the journey. Highly recommend you find him on social media to get all about the Butler student experience. And like um, my other peers have said tonight, we're just eager to have you to share more about our university. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Butler. Um, our next presenter will be DePaul University. Paul, you may be on mute there. Let me try that again. So good evening. Um, I'm Rebecca Moore. I'm a senior associate director of admission here at DePaul University in Greencastle, Indiana. Uh, we are located about two and a half hours from Cincinnati. Uh, as well as two hours and a little, almost three hours from Dayton um, and um, about three and a half from Columbus, just to give you an idea. We are 40 miles west of Indianapolis. We're located in a small town and we're the number one liberal arts college in the state of Indiana. Uh, one of the um, taglines that you'll hear a lot about DePauw is that we want you to find your gold within and um, we'll help you do that. We have a commitment uh, where we promise that at six months post-graduation, if you're not on your pathway, whether it be in your first job, uh, graduate school fellowship, then uh, we have alumni and friends who are happy to hire you. Um, and, um, or you could return to campus for an, a semester tuition free. Our students typically graduate in four years. Um, I would say the majority or 90 some percent will graduate in, uh, in four years. Um, it's not five or six. Um, and um, we are a small liberal arts college. Um, I want to share a little bit about um, uh, we start with a very strong foundation academically. Uh, we are, I think, there we go. I want to start with who we are. So uh, we are a small liberal arts college, uh, but also a university. We have a school of music. Uh, you'll see that the majority of our students will major in uh, the liberal arts, uh, and we are a national and international university. Um, some of our students, about 20%, are first-generation college students, uh, but we also have students who already have some kind of tie to our university through family members. The uh, student makeup of our um, student body is about 13% of our students are international, 24% are persons of color, and 63% are uh, Caucasian. Uh, many of our students come to us as high school athletes. Some will continue as varsity athletes. We are a division three uh, scholar athlete program. Uh, many of our students will participate in intramurals or simply use our facilities that are open to all of our students. Um, now I'm jumping to our uh, academic programs. Um, the pause education is made up of a strong academic foundation, but also extracurricular and co-curricular experiences. These are our top 10 majors, but we do have um, nearly 50 um, uh, majors in our College of Liberal Arts. Economics and management is our top most popular major. Uh, some of you may be interested in business, and I can assure you that the majority or a good number of our students will graduate and go on into the business world but we don't offer a major in business. Uh, we want you to study the theory and um, 
So you'll see that some of our um, STEM fields are also listed as our 10 most popular majors. Um, we have a strong tradition and track record um, for students who are studying in the STEM fields. We do also have a school of music with four different um, degree programs and um, that we are, we get the benefit of all of the performances. Students from our College of Liberal Arts are encouraged to participate in classes, practice, um, bands, orchestra, choir, productions, um, all of the things that are offered to our School of Music, but just at a different caliber um, and not just as a major. Our, um, our academic program is two semesters with um, a 4141 semester schedule. So we have something called winter term and May term. And um, those are opportunities for students to take a class that's not offered during the regular semester, uh, to do a job shadowing, to study abroad with one of our programs. Um, uh, before the pandemic, we um, hosted over 20 student uh, trips uh, overseas um, in January, and we offer um, some other options during May. So our winter athletes have the opportunity to do a short-term trip overseas as well. Uh, other students will do internships, of course, during the winter term. Um, and so we believe that your academic foundation paired with the experiential learning is a great opportunity. There are other ways that students um, will gain experiential opportunity and that's through our centers. Um, with the gold commitment, we ask students to complete at least two experiential learning situations and take on leadership roles. So we offer um, different uh, speaker series, leadership, uh, as well as um, internships, advising, all through our different centers on campus. Um, so many of our students will also take part in undergraduate research. And um, those, about 30% of our students will, uh, the images that you see on the screen now are of STEM research, but we also have students who will do undergraduate research in humanities, humanities and social sciences. Um, we have no graduate students at DePauw, so you are first in line as early as your first semester if you're interested in getting um, a taste of undergraduate research. Um, we are also ranked number four in the nation for sending students abroad. And when you combine the opportunities to study abroad and do internships, um, about 90% of our students will go overseas. I'm gonna share that we are a really great, fun, vibrant place to be with 120 organizations and clubs. Um, here are some of our outcomes. We have great success with our alumni and we encourage juniors to apply by August the 1st using the common application. Like all the other colleges have mentioned, we're a holistic review with test optional um, application. So I thank you for your time. Um, and I'm gonna share my contact information um, and I'll be reaching out to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, DePaul University. Uh, and our final presenter this evening will be Manchester University. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being with us uh, this evening to learn about all these great universities. Um, and thank you for being here um, to listen a little bit more about Manchester University as well. Um, so I'm Jacob Sweet. I'm a senior admissions counselor at Manchester University. Uh, Manchester University is located in Northeast Indiana um, in a small town called North Manchester, Indiana. And we are 45 minutes west um, of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Looking at Manchester by the numbers, uh, Manchester has been around a long time. Uh, we were first founded in 1889 uh, by the Church of the Brethren. Um, we still honor our Church of the Brethren backgrounds in two main ways. We had the first peace studies program um, in the world created back in 1948, and we still have a very vibrant peace studies institution uh, institute excuse me, today. And we also have an office completely dedicated to service, and those are going to be our two ways that we honor our Church of the Brethren background as well. We have 1,500 students at Manchester University uh, with 1,200 students on our main campus in North Manchester, Indiana. 
and then with the remaining students in our graduate location in Fort Wayne. Our class sizes are small with the average class size of 20, um, but most are under 20. And as a Manchester graduate myself, um, I did not have a class with too many more um, than around 20 students. And as you progress um, throughout the four years at Manchester, your class sizes will get smaller. 93% of our professors are full time and percent of them do uh, present the highest education in their fields as well. Manchester pulls in students from all over the country and all over the world with 36 states represented and 19 countries represented as well. 26% of our students are students of color and we offer an array of different majors and I will show you a slide with a list of those majors coming up but we do offer 70 plus majors as well. 32% of our students are first generation students and 45% of our students do participate in a study away program as well. I mean, we have several classes um, that do study abroad opportunities and study away. And we have a full office dedicated to our study away and study abroad opportunities, along with scholarships available for our students as well. Mentioned before that I would show a list of all of our areas of study at Manchester. So we do offer 70 areas of study. Um, so we are confident that you will find something that you are interested in um, through our um, different and through our liberal arts curriculum as well. Um, we are confident that you will get an array of a great education and um, learn about a lot of different backgrounds at Manchester. Well, and Manchester is constantly uh, learning of ways we can reshape our programs and certainly add more programs as well. Programs that are highlighted in blue currently, these are our popular majors. These are the majors that we see a lot of most of our students coming in and studying um, who decide on Manchester, um, that Manchester will be their university. Next is the majors that we are constantly either changing or majors that we've added over the last few years. So we're constantly looking at ways to benefit our students and remarketing our majors or certainly adding new majors as well um, that will attract students to Manchester as well. Um, looking at the most recent program that we just added was our nursing program, both an accelerated BSN program and our traditional nursing program as well. When I say new, we were just approved last week for a full nursing program, so we're very excited for that. Next thing you see in green, uh, these programs are going to be unique to Manchester. So we do have a three plus one accounting program that also includes a master's of accountancy, a three two athletic training program that also results in a master's program, and then again our peace studies program and we were the first university to have that peace studies program. Uh, we do offer graduate programs. So we are a small university, um, but we do offer graduate programs and we do have a full graduate location in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, so our first graduate program that we did have at Manchester is our Doctor of Pharmacy program, which results in a PharmD. Um, we were just one of um, three schools in the state of Indiana who do offer a pharmacy doctorate program. First master's program in, ma in pharmacogenomics um, was at Manchester University as well. So that is a one-year master's program. Master's of athletic training, as I mentioned before, our Master's of Accountancy. And then we did just recently add um, our accelerated BSN second degree program as well. Did mention on this slide that our Master's of Accountancy program is our one master's degree that's on our main campus in North Manchester. The rest of these are housed at our Fort Wayne, Indiana campus. Student success is obviously the most important part for us. And we have an overall placement rate of 96% within six months where our students are getting their first jobs even before they walk across the stage on their graduation. Maybe they're going into volunteering, going into graduate school, um, military, and doing something after college as well. 95% psychology graduate school acceptance rate, 89 into medical school over the last 10 years, 86 acceptance rate into law school, and 100% of students who have gone through our athletic training master's program have passed the board of certification as well. Uh, student life is a huge part of Manchester. Um, we, we have that in uh, alongside our academic programs as well. So we want you to be involved on campus, um, certainly go to class, get a great education, but be involved um, and enjoy our student life. And a big part of that is our 60 plus uh, clubs and organization. And on here is just to name a few of those opportunities as well. As I mentioned before, service is a big way that we honor our Church of the Brethren background. Um, and we do that um, through our Office of Service. Um, we have a lot of different opportunities for our students within this office, um, including participating in over 25,000 hours of community service that we um, clock each year. Campus life, we do require that you live on campus for the first three years. And we have traditional styles, suite styles at Manchester, and our apartment styles as well. 
Manchester is part of the NCAA Division Three, and we compete in the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference um, as well. And we do have a recently new Spartan Stadium as well. And just a list here of our men's and women's um, athletic opportunities as well. Finishing up here, all of our students in Manchester who are admitted do receive an academic scholarship, most importantly, and we do offer a $500 visit incentive scholarship just for visiting campus. And you are still able to visit campus, um, even with the COVID pandemic going on, um, you are still able to visit campus and receive that scholarship today as well. Uh, apply to Manchester, uh, very easy. Use the Common App or our application that we have, and we just need your official high school transcript. Going to be the scholarships are going to be based on the GPA that you did achieve while in high school. We are also a test optional university. Thank you very much for taking time to hear about Manchester, and I will put my contact information in the chat. Thanks. Thank you very much, Manchester University, and thank you to all of our panelists for your great presentations. Uh, we do have some time remaining, so attendees, if you have any additional questions for any of our panelists, please feel free to send them through utilizing the Q&A. Uh, while we're waiting to see what comes in, perhaps I could ask the panelists to turn their videos back on, and we can do a quick round of questions here ourselves. So. I know six minutes is not very long. Uh, so what is one thing that you did not have time to present on that you'd like to quickly cover? Maybe that's your favorite event or tradition on campus, a fun fact uh, or something else. So we'll go in that same order, starting with Earlham College. Sure, um, I will just say, I didn't get to say that you can visit campus, whether it's virtually or in person, um, but we are having a drive-through experience for admitted student events. So if you're still interested in applying and you are admitted, um, we'd love to have you through our drive-through experience. Just stay in your car while you're on campus and you get to see everything that we hoped you would have saw if we did like an open house. Um, so definitely wanna highlight that and it'll be a lot of fun. Great, thank you. Uh, University of Evansville. My favorite campus event is road trip. We spend one weekend in February. We send out six buses throughout the Midwest and we bus all of our admitted students back to campus. That way you get to experience what a, being a college student is like for a weekend. And um, we obviously couldn't do that this year, but it has moved to all online um, the second week of April. So if you are a current senior, definitely apply to your applications so that we can attend virtual road trip. But hopefully we'll be able to have it in February of 2022, fingers crossed, where you can come visit campus and spend the whole weekend with us. Great, thank you. Purdue? I encourage everybody to, all admitted students, to participate in one of the nation's largest orientation programs called Boiler Gold Rush. We put a big emphasis on the transition to college because we know and understand that it is a big one. We have students move to campus a full week before classes actually begin, get settled in your residence hall. You don't even have to move any of your own stuff because we have hundreds of volunteers to help you do that. Great, right, thank you. Butler? I always encourage students when looking at college to think of a long-term effect. One of the greatest benefits of a university like Butler is all the assistance we have for our graduates once they leave Butler. So, we have a 98% placement rate, but know that there's a lifelong guaranteed when it comes to our career and services office. So whether you are five years post grad and back on the job market, know that Butler's there to assist you um, through all of your professional and personal advancements in Butler. All right, thank you. Uh, DePaul? Hi, um, I just wanted to add that um, we are hosting uh, in-person visits. And for admitted students, we um, welcome you to visit. Um, if you've already been here, come back again. Uh, we'll have a virtual admitted student day on uh, April the 22nd. Um, and um, we opened a brand new residence hall in August. So we will, would love to be able to show that to you. Um, and we'll have gold visit days for our admitted students in the summer. But juniors, I'd love to work with you and find what you're interested in and share with you what DePaul may or may not have to offer you. Thank you. Thank you. And Manchester. So like everyone else, I wanna make another plug for visiting campus as well. And I certainly did um, 
during my presentation as well. And I'm grateful to Manchester, and I think all of you are grateful for our universities for being able to adapt um, during this time for us to be able to have visitors on campus. And our administration in Manchester has done a great job of that. Um, and we do offer that $500 um, a year visit incentive for visiting. Um, and that's also in effect for juniors right now as well. And you're able to go into our buildings, our residence hall, see a room, and see all of our brand new buildings, including our Spartan Stadium um, on campus during that tour as well. So we'd love to see you um, at Manchester, hopefully soon. Thank you, Manchester, and thank you to all of our panelists for your extra insights and again for your great presentations. And we definitely want to thank all of our attendees for joining us today. Before we wrap up this session, just a few quick housekeeping items. When you close your window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask that you take a minute to complete. And again, there is one other block of sessions this evening, as well as sessions tomorrow. So please do sign up for those if you haven't already done so. And about one week from today, a recording of the session will be available on that same registration website. But thank you again uh, to everybody and good luck in your college search. Have a great evening.